gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to a brand new episode of With the Side of Chaos. It's Patricio, a.k.a. Rocky, and uh, I'm feeling a little salty. How you feeling, Aaron? Jesus Christ, Tuesday. <laughs> Why the fuck did you wake me up? <laughs> Dude, we have so much shit going on this week, and you were trying to ske- reschedule this show that we have going on right now for Friday, but you forgot I'm going to be in Chicago that day. Yeah. I- I'll be Bring me to back something to remind me of a place I respect. <laughs> At least when I flick the bane in Chicago, I'm getting laid. Oh, Jesus, Tad That's a, that's a <laughs> double joke. But uh, on tonight's show, even though we're, we usually do Thursdays or Fridays towards the end of the week, uh, today's episode is a little bit of a, a little bit of a treat for myself and for our uh, our listeners, and of course the guest himself. We have David fucking Jolly up in the house. How you doing today, Jolly? Mama, we made it. <laughs> I'm doing great. Uh, just. Just alive, you know. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, just working, grinding, same shit I always do. You were actually one of the very first Orlando comics that I sat down with. You were actually number two because I had the first one I actually talked to was Leslie Joe. Mm. But uh, you were the one who came came to the house, like the humble beginnings when we had everything set up on the table, wires all over. I mean, we still have a lot of wires all over the place now, but you you walked in here and. Even even watching the intro, watching everything, a lot has changed in two years. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's more organized. I mean, look how fucking great this looks. You're in a real office building, you know? Back in the days, it was like, uh, the, you got to lock the dog outside. <laughs> hey, I mean, he that's just... knocks to the dog, but locked outside. It keeps the it keeps the prostitutes away during the show. <laughs> you ever had a prostitute walk in there on you? We... Oh, wait. We uh yeah, the thing we about brought is, some. We, we brought some. We we brought some to we, the show. Yeah, yeah, we brought some to the show. We've had some call in. We actually had someone call in when we were uh when we were both working for the same show. You you actually brought a prostate and called her prostate, and that's where I learned the word prostate. <laughs> that's fucking awesome. So did you just find her on the road or no? Because like uh, I I've, I've been open about this uh when I talked about on entering the black hole. I used to do a lot of security. Yeah, yeah, for, and I remember at the strip club. Yeah, and uh, I made a lot of friends. I, uh, I I met a lot of people, and I got offered a lot of jobs for you know for, uh, providing my services to certain individuals that do certain things at certain times of the night. Oh, okay, you was like an <laughs> assistant pimp. <laughs> Pretty much. Well, no, oh, no, no, no. You're a t- discount Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> that, oh, that, man, that, you that's in a... regards to uh, Fat Joe being someone mean. I know you did security, but I never knew you were an assistant pimp. <laughs> I just made sure the girls never got hurt. That was my one thing. I never uh, scheduled anything. I didn't receive any money for that kind of shit. Yeah, I yeah, just yeah, made yeah. sure that uh, everyone was safe you when were, they needed to be. You were just the security for a fucking whorehouse, and that's that's what it is, cut and dry. <laughs> my, my, you ran a brothel security force. Fuck you. Be, be, <laughs> before, uh, before um, I, but I lived in Tampa, my buddy, uh, before they had like Backpage and List Crawl and all that stuff, they had like a magazine called V12 where they would have like all of the different strip clubs and they had like private escorts. You, you said V12, right? That was the name of the magazine, I believe. I think so, yeah. It was like a, it was like an adult entertainment magazine. <laughs> like you can be in a strip club or a lingerie shop and they just had a magazine there and it's like, oh, what do you know? These so, so just call hey, hookers dude, up. I really wish that those were in the restaurant we used to have in Illinois as opposed to the, the Farmer's Almanac that we got to read on a weekly basis to see which cow died that week. <laughs> but but the, the thing about the V12s was like, uh, like my buddy got a job it was a job as a driver is what it was enlisted as, but he had to drive the girls. He might have to drive to Lakeland, mm. all the way to Orlando, uh, and the girls would go get the money and come back, and he had like a fucking ninja sword in his back seat. That shit was fucking hilarious. That is extremely hilarious. Like, <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this, and just, is he white? Nah, he black. Nah, that's my and, problem. That, and, now, and he had a sword. But he is like one of those anime people. Like <laughs> he would be more. I really towards... want to pull out a Bruce Leroy joke, but I don't know if that's acceptable. But Bruce, yeah, he would be more like Bruce Leroy. Bruce Leroy, okay. Because he, he had like the 
Bruce Leroy, that was his name. You yeah, know who Bruce yeah, Leroy is? Yeah, yeah. Uh, from uh, you know where that come from? The Last Dragon. The Last yeah, Dragon. Yeah, there yeah, it yeah. is. There it is. Black I could. I could. I was trying to say like. Uh, I almost said the Black Dragon. I'm like now I'm going way too far with my. Oh shit. man, who no, gave a no, damn, no, man? Yeah, it is. We're gonna keep going back. We might as mention uh, Eddie Murphy is the Golden Child while we're at it. Yeah. Fair. I, but if yeah, you think I about think it, we haven't heard about that movie in a while. Let's come back. This is the way I look at it. If it's funny, it's not racist. You know what I mean? I I don't I don't like ra- racism. I got a bit where I say I don't even trust people who are not prejudiced. It's true. It's true because like everyone. It makes you an American. We are prejudiced. Everyone in one shape or another. I'm gonna say this loud and proud. Everyone has a little bit of racism and a tad sprinkle of hate in them. Well, I mean, when when I, I say prejudice, not. like the definition of being prejudiced is to go ahead and stereotype somebody before you you meet them okay that's the definition of being prejudiced okay so not racist racist mean you just don't like somebody for the color of their skin <laughs> you just be shit in well i, th- I think so, we can all say so what is it what is it then uh if prejudice is just based on the color of the skin uh how how, how do you hate a hive mind then is that the same thing like if you hate like some of the way that they do their their culture what is a hive mind like a hive mind, like everybody thinks unilaterally on a certain issue. Like say, say how a stereotype is born. You know what I'm saying? Like, like how we collectively is that is that still considered racism or is that just like I don't get it? Not, I mean, I'm curious. I mean, I don't think so. I mean, when I say prejudice, I'm just saying like don't get it too mixed up. That's why like right. when I tell the bit, it's so like crazy because it's the people looking like <gasps> like. It, being prejudiced just make you American. It just means you you already <laughs> define somebody. No, seriously. Like, if you look at somebody and you, like, look at me, you're thinking, man, I guarantee that guy can fry some chicken. Yeah. You know what I mean? But that does that's being prejudiced, but it's a fact. Well, no, Because no, I no. can fry the fuck out of some chicken. Fair and square, because my girlfriend, even before, like, I cooked for her, she, she'd ask me, can you cook Mexican food? I'm like, yeah, but then at the same time, and I go back to one quick uh, quick story. A few years ago, a friend of mine calls me up at 3.30 in the morning. She's like, hey, Pat, look, uh, I locked my keys in my car. I don't have AAA. Can you come help me out? <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, hold on, hold on. What, what? Why? She's like, dude, I know you can do it. And immediately, I'm going into, like, sensitive mode. I'm like, are you saying I could break into a car because I'm Mexican. Yes. And she's like, yes. <laughs> just flat out said, I'm yeah. like, bitch, I'm, I'm going to come over there and whoop your ass just for you but, saying that shit. But See, it's like, uh, like that's that's like hilarious stereotypes are funny. Yeah. Especially when they're completely different. Like when I was, I still don't really eat meat. I mean, I eat it a little bit. But when I was, a, when I was, because <laughs> I'm addicted to chicken and that's because right, I'm right, black. Right. You know, I have my moments. I'm but good, good. when I was, a, when I was going I'm vegan. Asian. And, and I tell people, oh, I'm vegan. They looking at me like, get out of here. You kidding me? Well, well if I tell somebody I speak Portuguese fluently, uh-huh. then they'll look at me like, what? I mean, I probably can't speak it as much as I do now. And that's when I was a server. I was uh, around more Brazilians, and I would like be speaking. They'll come in, and I'd be like, oi. They'll be like, oi. I'd be like, tudo yeah. bem. And, and I'm, I'm talking to them, taking their order, because it was all Brazilians on our drive. And they'll look at me like, Get the fuck out of here. I have. Yeah. We ain't smoked no weed since we left uh, Portugal. Yeah, I mean, yeah, fucking, uh, what's the name of that city? St. Paulo. That's the last time. You know, I'm like, I am fucking tripping right now. My, my favorite thing is my wife goes to San Paulo and hangs out with a friend from our Disney days. This is the weird story. He wasn't gay when he was at Disney, but came out in Brazil. I was like, yeah, you kind of fucked that up, buddy. <laughs> yeah, you should have came out in <laughs> Orlando. You should Disney and stay the fuck out of Brazil. You'd you know mean, what I'm saying? Like, it's like, oh. Imagine how many prides he missed, mm-hmm. how many dicks slapped against his face, because yeah. it's a lot of dick slapping <laughs> in Orlando, deeper, you know. It's an off mic story. No, <laughs> it's, it's really fucking deep. Actually, I, I really don't understand it, but I'm sure but, Mar-a-Logo, Mar-a-Lago still involved somehow. I want to, I want to go to Brazil, but I want to. If I go, uh-huh. I have to go with a Brazilian friend. Like I'm not going over there on no tourist stuff, or right because you will be kidnapped. Oh yeah, hundred percent. It's only two different. It's like you either really rich or you really poor. There's no middle class in Brazil. Mm-hmm. No, and, and then uh, here comes the innocent American down here, and she goes. Oh, your poor is not as poor as our poor, so we're gonna take you. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But, but I want I want to go back to what we were just talking about, like uh, like the positive stereotype. Y- utilizing like that term, you know, positive stereotype is that a form of uh, 
prejudice or is that a a new wave uh, of racism? Do you think? You say positive, uh... like a, like a positive uh, stereotype. Like let's say, for example, oh, he's Mexican, he probably knows how to fix things, or he uh, uh, he's Asian, he's probably really great good at, at math. math. Okay, e- exactly. So, is a positive stereotype uh, considered uh, prejudice, racism, racism, racist, or uh, or unknown? Unknown. Uh, unknown. Uh, prejudice or unknown? Because I mean, I'm still making a, I'm still stereotyping you, so I would make me prejudice. Okay. Yeah. But I guess unknown is like, I don't know. That's like, that's wild. Cause yeah, we are all prejudiced, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Until you get to know somebody, like that's why you you don't really see like you you don't go downtown. That's why no, that's why I like to go downtown. Cause I'll go to like a bar. Let's say you go uh, when um what was uh, when John Henry's was open. Ain't that oh, the yeah, name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was a great bar. You can go in there, and you might just be sitting at the bar watching a game or something. And like, let's say I don't know you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we just start talking about the game. Now next thing we know, we're talking about something. Don't worry else. about what I'm doing. Don't worry about what I'm doing. We might just be talking about something else out of that. Then next thing you know, it's like. Oh shit! I just met a friend that if it wasn't for this game here, I never would have just ran across you. Never yeah. in life or comedy. Look at comedy. Yeah. Most of my comedian friends are people who don't have sex. You look at them and be like, man, this dude do not look cool at all. Like I, you, yeah. you look like you're gonna be a virgin forever. You know, but you know, the you, moment they get on stage, you're like, okay, this guy fucks. Or 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 you just be like. This brought us together. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I feel Jake Rico brings in some good pussy. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not saying yeah, no, any no, particular name. Don't, do don't be shitty to people. Like, no, no, no Jake Rico. I'm no. pretty sure Jake Rico fucks. Oh, yeah, Jake uh, Rico I'm fucking. Sure he does. Yeah, he fucking fucks. But I'm just saying, like, okay, like, when I first started doing comedy, mm-hmm. the people I used to see at the mics, and they tell them, like, butthole jokes. A lot of them don't do it no more and stuff, and it's like, you're hearing butthole jokes and... Oh yeah, I got a BJ and stuff. And I'm like, there's no way you're having sex with anybody. You have never fucked. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can just look at him and like, you definitely do not fuck. <laughs> but it, but it's it's just like those two walks of life. Cause like, I mean, I'm very well cultured, but I come from an urban background. I came from like the the hood. You mm-hmm. know, that's where I grew up at. I wasn't gonna let that subject me to stay in the same position. But at the same time, that's where I'm from. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I never would have known these motherfuckers. Me and Jerry Scott, we, we're still cool, but this motherfucker here, if you look at him, you think he a goddamn racist. Yeah. Right. So, have you ever met Jerry Scott? I have not. You ain't okay. never met yeah. Jerry Scott? I, I, you know I, I don't think so. You know what? I'm going to bring him on a show, and okay. I, I am going to lock the door, and then you are going to smoke a lot of pot. And you will be lost in the, a world of conspiracy theories Alex Jones hasn't even thought of yet. Then we'll have to, we'll have to do that one from the house. Yeah. Definitely love that's, it. That's I've it. been. I'm not gonna lie. I want to do a smoking episode. I just have to do it in a more comfortable environment. I'm not yeah, gonna you smoke. can't do it here. I can't smoke here. Hell no. Nah, this where you. This is where you pay your bills. Exactly. That'd be the dumbest that, shit ever. This is where I'm able to buy my weed. From. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. And I'm the one who sells you the weed. Yes, yeah. it's amazing. It's like the whole life cycle all comes together. You can't. This is a circle of life symbol. Uh, and that was not admittance of. Anything there. Uh, the views and yeah. opinions expressed on uh, with the side of chaos are not expe- uh, expressed to be the purposes of. Only only do- buy Dogecoin. <laughs> Dogecoin is the shit. I'm gonna get rich off of it. I'm probably gonna buy me a midget off of Dogecoin. We're gonna buy me and. Uh, Pat well, at least rent one. Yeah. You think you, that's is that fucked up thing to say? Uh, yeah, I, I think the little people of America might uh, climb together and punch you in the face. Yeah, it'll be a short fight. Yeah, <laughs> I'm the calling the police are, too. I pay taxes on here are short. Yeah. I pay, I pay taxes. I'm calling the police if they get into it with me. You going to jail, man. You know Can what? Can you just see the people in lockup as the five midgets walk through the door who are there for <laughs> fighting because you had them arrested? <laughs> that is the funny shit I like to think about. Can you imagine Bubba the prison guard? And he's just like, you ain't going to survive long in here, Tiny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Giving him some buck name. He don't even have a name. But now that tiny dude is now tiny forever. <laughs> At least in the Orlando County's prison system. No, I, I, and here's the thing: like there, yeah. there, there are agencies out there that you're able to <laughs> rent a little person or a, or a midget. I don't know if they're they're okay. Ah, fuck it. Uh, midget. I've always Listen, said midget. Somebody is... that's yeah, because I mean it was always acceptable. I just say people who are height deprived. Fair. Or is that messed up too? No, you can say deprived, but because the word deprived is funny. 
You know what I mean? Or it's because it implies like negative angle. However, challenged, challenged handicapped or hand at how did it go? Handicap, uh, height handicap, or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, Vert- I like vert- 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 I like vertically challenged. Vertically challenged. Thank you. I, I, I smoked some grass before the show. So, sometimes I tell myself, man, I wish they never came out with the internet, because just for the simple fact that the internet came out, now everybody got a, a platform to say, oh, my feelings are hurt. Like you know what I mean? Like people who were uh, missing the chromosome, or they used to. <laughs> You know what I mean? The, the R word. That was never a problem. They didn't get offended. Nobody got offended. You know what? I, honestly, if you want to say retarded, say retarded. It's stupid. Hey, I'm it's not saying it. Cause I'm, I'm not like, saying I'm that fam- either. I'm famous as hell. I don't, don't want to get shit. canceled you yet. Go- no, that's fine. If, if SNL, if I ever get the chance to be on SNL, then that's the chance I took. I swear to God, you say Doge after that, I'm, I'm throwing you out of the out of the room. Uh, to the moon. To the moon. But that's another one? No. What, 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 uh, that's our slogan. Well, no, because uh, Elon Musk is going to be on SNL uh, this uh, this Saturday night, and everyone everyone's dying to find out what he's going to say because you know there's going to be a bit of Do- uh, on Dogecoin. There's going to be some making fun of it, or there's going to be an announcement. And this morning, dude, you you saw it was at forty three cents this morning. It peaked at sixty today. Yeah, it peaked at sixty. We're at, at, we're floating around fifty four right now, but that's way more than what we were at earlier uh, earlier in the month. Oh, I'm, I, it, I think it might drop before Saturday. Mm-hmm. It might drop Thursday or Friday to dip a little bit, and I'm going to spend another... I might put $1,000 on buy, it. Buy in low. And sell it all Monday morning. I'm going to tell you something very, very, very important to both of you. This Saturday, if you haven't watched SNL in a while, you will be this Saturday. Oh, yeah. Do it. If there is only one thing you have to do on Saturday, it's watch SNL. I because the key. moment... The moment... SNL is broadcast once around the world. You understand what I'm saying? So when that news drops, that's when Doge goes up for a minute. It is the largest push coin, coin push in the history of cryptocurrency. Oh, what they're doing with Doge? That's what they're doing. You're building it up so it looks like a credible source, but the whales are going to come in there and take from the what is left and you guys will be swimming if you are not upstream you are the salmon against the bears well the, I, the huge rumor is that he apparently elon musk is going to announce that, Do, uh, that dogecoin is going to be an acceptable currency with tesla mm. that's that's been the floating rumor that i've seen in the in the subreddits here on facebook social media and yeah i i know by me saying subreddit or social media is not a credible source okay here humans are we coming Doge? Are we talking Doge? Because we're talking we're, Doge, or are we talking Jolly? We're gonna talk Jolly with a. With Man, a we're just side. having a we having a conversation right. with a so side of Doge. Yeah, you got thirty seconds. I got thirty seconds. Conversation. All right, starting now. Okay, so basically, here's what's going to happen. The fundamentals of all of our shit that we know as humans basically go, oh, let's do this because it makes us feel good. Let's gamble, 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 gamble. Keep throwing money in there. You need to tactically look at twenty this seconds. Shit. Beyond anything of even human reason, you need to be acceptable that when you find a price that's acceptable for you, sell it, don't buy back in, get the fuck out, because that is your profit. Walk away, you'll be much happier in your life. Take it from me. I will say this, and I'll throw in my 10 seconds to meet your 30. I sold, I already, I pulled out my initial investment. So whatever I have right now is what I have earned from, from Dodge. Yeah. So... No, but that's what I'm saying. You're you're not listening entirely. This coin has had more media attention than Bitcoin has in the last four weeks. Do you know what that's caused? It caused a huge dip in the whole cryptocurrency system for a long period of time, like five days. Everybody was like, what's going on? Two billion dollars dropped into the cryptocurrency industry because someone in Turkey disappeared. And then that wallet was open to the entire world. That's how serious this shit is. What do you mean that wallet was open? They, that they wallet had it? $2 billion in it just let to the sharks. The wallet that is basically the oh, yeah. value of, yeah. of, the, of that crypto. Yeah, I mean, I got a wallet on, my, on crypto.com, of yeah, course. That's, that's where you what put I'm your money. About. Someone basically sold all their crypto for, oh. that was worth $2 billion. And when you flood the system like that, it's... It, it is essentially a version of a DDoS attack on a hacker organization. It cripples it. it. 
Bitcoin went to 52,000 when just days before it was pushing 64,000. Yeah. How are you not going to tell me that that two bill? You need to watch not only the one that you're in, but the other ones too. You need to be able to get ready to dump and dive the minute you see fucking fire. And that is the last That's we. That's the problem of it. That is the last we're going to talk about uh, cryptocurrency for the rest of the show. Because if, if I give you any more time, you're not you're going to go all day. I have an entire show based on this called Crypto Side. Well, you you got a podcast called Crypto Side. It's coming Side? out, yeah. He's, yeah. he's got some pretty good people on that, including uh, some. No, pretty... no, 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 no. I'm not saying names. I'm saying like knowledge, knowledge people in regards to the field yeah. itself. Yeah, I was like, we're having a personnel change, so please, please <laughs> don't be announcing shit. So no, uh, Jolly, I and, I and I say this to the comedians that come on the show that I've been following for, I, I and I've said it before. I've, I met you through Tom and Dan. Yeah. I met you through no. Let's take out Tom and Dan. It was Ross McCoy Stumbleweeds. And yeah. That, that's where I met you. That's where I met a lot of the uh, the comics Good in, times there, back then. in the early stages of the Orlando comedy scene. And I've, I've seen the evolution that has come to the Orlando comedy scene with the talent. You know, some people faded away. Some people are still going strong. Some people, you know, have, have stepped up their game. And I know right now, like, with, with, with you, Jolly, you, you, you stepped away from the scene for a little bit to take care of uh, personal things. But, like, now you're back. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm seeing you post up more on your social media with like bigger shows more acts headlining and you're you're throwing yourself out there like i mean i always been that way it's just that like i step i just uh i don't get into the nonsense man because if you know like a lot of the stuff that that's in the inner circles of comedy it was a while people arguing about this just get better man ain't nothing you you can't go do uh you can't go do uh Radio City Hall right now. So what am I arguing with some other person here who like just trying to go to an open mic to get five minutes? Exactly. Like I got to go on the road tomorrow, and um, I just don't really, I don't really, I used to always this this way I look at it now. I used to always repost other people's shows and support other people's stuff, and I sit back and I look at my memories and I'm like, none of these cocksuckers never even post reposted none of my shows one time, and it's like. I have to worry about me. I don't give a fuck what nobody doing. Mm-hmm. If it ain't got nothing to do with comedy, no, I don't want to hang out. You know, I'd rather go home and do something on the computer because I'm not the best computer savvy person in the world, but I can figure something out about taking up time. You know? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to tell you something just to help you along your way. Conva.com. That's all What's you that? need. I'll show you after the show. <laughs> but I'm announcing it to the world, too, that you need to get on par because the flyers are a lot easier to make than they used well, to. Well, I mean, you know, I, I don't really. Mm-hmm. I, I had a I had a couple of room. I had a room downtown off Pine, but at that point, it wasn't so much as to, like, make a profit off of it. I don't even think I was charging for it, and I didn't understand to get the bar to pay you to get a host and stuff. I just was like, these people were like, yeah, you can do whatever you want with it the old basement, and I was just like, I'm, I just love comedy so much to where I want to give other young people a platform to come and y'all have a show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it'd be like little clicks, and the, the funny part about it is most of these people suck at it who, like, do the stuff to where they can make some shit say how it goes. Yeah. And it's like, hey, why you a dick? What you a dick for? You're not even good at comedy if I want to tell you the, the, the real, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's just, I don't know. It'd be a lot of, no, no, no. I stay out of all that now. You're absolutely right. I, I, you learn when you watch it enough for long enough. No, know, I like, mean, I never been the one to be, you were never in it. Like, in the nonsense, but when you just keep hearing it and seeing it, I just completely branch myself away from the Orlando comedy scene. Yeah. I get some young comics, and a lot of them come to my house, and I let them, like, run their bits. And then we all, like, it's like five or six of them. And we're like, you know, just, like, tag. That's how you get good. You tag it up and be like, okay, what part of this shit can you cut out? Because you didn't have to say that. That wasn't even funny. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? And no, just and, to get better. And, and that's really good that you're able to, like, you're reaching out to, like, the, the, the up-and-comers in, in this area. I mean, you, you have to. I've always been that way. Any up-and-comer that, uh, that's probably good now that didn't start right at the same time as me or maybe a little bit under, I'm, I'm always nice. Hey, man, that, that shit was funny. Because everybody else looking at you when you get out of stage is like, even though it was funny, but I like, do just like this shit ain't that serious. Yeah. Right. It, 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 
I think for a while I got caught up in that melodrama and I just backed the fuck away from them. Well, I started running up grumpies a little differently. Everybody's welcome here. You know what I mean? Even the ones I don't like. Come on over. Yeah, I don't take that person. I don't give a damn if I like you or not. If you're funny, you're funny. Yeah, exactly. But no, but no, you're you're right about that. The the drama that is, uh, I'm not even gonna say it like that. But like, there there's always gonna be drama in it, in any sort of scene. And mm-hmm. I remember, and I'm, I'm not gonna name any names out there, but hanging out with uh, with a certain comic, and then hearing all the backlash and the bullshit stories that were coming out of their mouths about a certain other comic, and then that shit just like blowing up and basically like destroying that person's career here here in the city come to find out that it was it was all bullshit it was all bullshit and you know yeah. wh- why you got to bring that negativity I- into the scene why you got to why why does that fuel you wanting to destroy someone else's whether it's a career whether it's a hobby whether it's a side gig like why what is the reasoning behind the negativity a lot of a lot of comedians uh suffer from us anxiety and depression like to a point you wouldn't even understand and that's their release mechanism when they're able to go on that stage and you know and that anxiety i mean like to a point where it's really 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 bad most i say eight out of ten you know what i'm saying yeah like like literally you know and it get to the point where it's like they, they get into it with somebody else, and then they're getting getting into. I don't, I don't get it myself. Like we all get depressed, and we all have our moments where we doubt ourselves. But it get I, a lot of people are like clinically proven to be messed up in the head, and they like to keep up with it. It's a it's a lot of them, you know, that just like There's nobody lot. call them out on it though. That's the crazy part to me. A lot of unstable cats in our scene. Yeah, that's why I don't I don't that's even not call not. myself an Orlando comic. Mm. Really? No. Nah. What do you What do you identify I'm as? I'm a national touring comedian. You really are. Because I don't want to be known as nothing that has anything to do with negativity. I am an Orlando comedian. I used to really embrace Orlando, but now I could care less. You know? Yeah. I got a show like two and a half hours away. Uh, Eric Santana featuring for me. I got a couple yeah, other yeah. shows. Uh, I got a lot of shows coming up. I got to go to Port St. Lucie. Uh, I what, got, are you doing? What, are you, what are you doing in St. Lucie? I don't be knowing this. I don't even like. Yeah, I, I, if it's the bar that I lastly got drank at, last nah, it's got like a, it's like with, a theater. Oh, okay. No, no, no. Don't don't take me along. I don't I don't want to scare the <laughs> nice white people in there. Well, no, I, I mean my <laughs> my buddy Kelvin Kelvin at Miller Junior. Shout out to him. He he run like a dope monthly room there. Mm-hmm. Um, it's at a theater, and I just I don't know. I ain't trying to bash nobody, but man, I be seeing what's going on even with other people. And like they'll talk to this and, and they'll make this person look like this and look like that and I just say I'ma make it any way it go. You know. It's just time for snip snip, if you know what I mean. You know what I mean? Like just cut the shitty people out. And just keep doing what you're doing. No, I mean I really it, it, this this my this is my mind frame. I'm doing me. Wow, you totally if you see wanna that, if you wanna come if you wanna oh. come along and you say we down with each other, cool. Cause like when when I say the person name, uh, like my boy Desmond, you know I've been knowing him since high school, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Been knowing, I mean, well I've been knowing him since, yeah, high school. This man gets into a all-out war. I mean, we're just very disrespectful. We didn't did it like three or four times with Ken Miller, and I'm like, like what's the what was the purpose of that? Yeah. Like I don't want my name attached to nothing that has any do thing to do. If you beefing with this person, then you need to handle that. Yeah. Don't say you with me or none of that there. Like when I started the winners, the winners group LLC, I started that in the point of, of a business mindset, not to compete with nobody that I'm gonna run past anyway. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like I'm better than everybody. I, I feel that way. Well, no, if you, if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? And I mean to say that in the most asshole, arrogant, narcissistic way possible. <laughs> That's how I, I feel. That's why I don't even small talk with people that much no more. Like, I barely, I drink a little bit now, but before I go on the stage, I'm coming in there to fucking destroy your room, and then we can have drinks. Yeah. And, and I've had the privilege of, of seeing you over the past few... Uh, yeah, s- Dolly six... is a force to reckon with. Oh, no. Three, he, he... four. Three, four. He hits the stage. Six or seven years, like I, I've been, fo- I've been following your career here. Well, I, I'm at five. It might seem like it because I go so hard. Yeah. But I'll be at five years, May 14th. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I may be pushing, uh, pushing the marker right there. But so yeah, so about five years. I, I, 
like I said, I, I I met you through Ross McCoy. I you you're one of the very first guests that I had on this show. Yeah, you my partner. And you already I, know that. I remember there was one uh, one day we did the show, and it was nine hours. And <laughs> it's like a hang, you know what I mean? It ain't like a job. It's Jolly not holds the record. Besides the political show, Jolly holds the record for the longest episode of Chaos that ever was broadcasted. Which I'm not doing a little nine bit hours over, a little bit I'm over. I'm not doing nine hours with you. I'm not sitting in a porta potty with you. A little hours. bit over three hours, but no, it was. I think it was that day or, or another episode where we actually went out to Porky's. Yeah, 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 yeah. In, in Kissimmee, we went and hung out. Cause remember, I was like, uh, man, I got a show. You was like, hey, I'll take you out there. Yeah. Why not? Let's go hang out. And I went and I had a. I think I was hosting that weekend. I, I believe, yeah, you were, you were. Yeah. And it, it was a cool experience to see you host, because I think at that point, I hadn't seen you host. Yeah. I've seen you, you know, uh, doing your uh, open mic, seeing you uh, do, uh, do your sets, uh, but never seen you host. And you, you controlled that room. Now, mind you, that room was in a city where... Our, you know, our colors <laughs> yeah, yeah, aren't yeah. seen that much. But it's the good thing I love about St. Cloud, man. Like, I got it featured there. I've hosted there. Uh, anytime, like, Ken, shout out Ken Miller, he'll hit me up and just be like, hey, man, I need a host this weekend. I'll be like, all right, I'll go out there. Yeah. And I, like, know Vinny. I know Eric Godfrey. Those are owners. Excuse me. Uh, his parents, Vinny parents come out there. It's such a great place. Yeah. And St. Cloud, you know, you think of St. Cloud, and like you said. Yeah, our colors. It, yeah, it's like, oh, boy. But, nah, I get embraced there. You, and that was, and that was the mentality. Love, man. I never had a problem out there. I, I like, like, to be honest with you, uh, I was supposed to send Eric my AVALS to get a feature date there, but I'm pretty sure I come across some hosting dates. But I love that club. Mm-hmm. They got like, some good food. Oh man, listen, the best in the in in probably Central Florida when it comes to barbecue, black or white, that barbecue <laughs> five. They got them briskets over there. And, and I like like okay, Orlando it, Orlando Improv is my home club. Porky's is is definitely like in my top two favorite clubs. Okay. I just like it, man. It's a good vibe over there, man. That shit is dope. No, and I, I remember when uh, when you got up on that stage. You you poked fun at the fact that it was a different a, a different crowd different yeah. different uh, sect of people and they ate it up and and I feel like there are certain avenues when going into comedy look I'm not a comic I'm not a professional comedian I've done sets where I bombed 95 percent of the time <laughs> uh, you know ninety nine point nine 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 percent you bombed. I think I seen I you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I you think I seen you do all right. You, uh, you bring me along, and I just, I, I, I'm, I'm more of a storyteller. I'm more of a storyteller, and that's why you know I'm behind the mic, uh, uh, do, doing, the, doing the podcast. But when it comes to like comedy itself, I think like they're allowing a little bit of abuse towards like the, the crowd gets them going in a sense. Like you know, poking fun at, at, at a couple or poking fun. But that's. That's like the dumbest shit you can do if you. If, if, if you see right there, educate me. Educate if me. If any young comics are out there, you want to keep the crowd on the other side. Yeah. They did not come to a comedy show for you to talk about them. You see him, boom, right there. They and came. Jolly, Jolly just opened my eyes right there. I mean, look, they came. Like I'm not gonna. I got a lot of stuff that that's like pretty clever. My jokes. I'm never gonna like disrespect or separate the crowd. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I am so sorry, Jolly. Uh, I do not worry, baby. We're making tacos tonight, okay? I am sorry. We're making tacos tonight. Don't worry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, she, she's, like, she's like, taco margaritas? You know, the uh, Yeah, like, what's going on, baby? <laughs> but yeah, go on, man. I'm, so, I'm sorry to interrupt you right no, now. No, it's all good. Um, no, but I was saying, like, you got to think about it now, right? You come into a show. Mm -hmm. You got your girl with you. You came here to be entertained. You didn't come here. You could have called your homeboy up and y'all could just jump beers in the living room and crack jokes on each other. True. Right. True. I don't want to be the ass of a, of a thousand people out here or 500, <laughs> depending on how many people you're playing for, but I don't want to be that. I'll do a lot of self-deprivating shit okay. to me so that you can laugh at my pain, like Kevin Hart say. A lot of comics get mad and then they, make, they write jokes for themselves. Like, I love Jerry Scott, but Jerry Scott, when he bombs, it's because he's doing bits for him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Most of these people that you're talking to don't want to know what a what they they drunk. Hey, yeah, my sensory nervous system and came back and my little my ligament was popped out of place. Ha ha ha! Like 
<laughs> shit ain't funny. I'm not saying him in particular. I'm just saying like if you go no, do comedy, it, it was just your impression that, that, that just like okay. Well, that ain't even his impression. I'm just saying like Jared Scott, because that's my partner. That's yeah. my homeboy. You know what I'm saying? And I remember because either him or Ray Reyes back when I ain't, I ain't have a license, they'll come and get me for mics. Because I used to get on the bus to go to mics. I get on a bus two hours and try to catch a ride to the next one and catch a bus home at the end of the night. Because I want this shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, I would ride with them and I would be like, hey, man, you know, maybe you should, like, say shit that people understand. You're using words they don't understand. You know, they don't want to do all that thinking. Mm-hmm. The, the punchline is like, boom, right here. If you cut all the words out, you ain't got to say. Get to the fucking point you're trying to make. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that's why a lot of comics bomb, because they don't cut the fat on shit, or they try to use words where they're smarter than a motherfucker. Man, these people drunk as hell. You are in goddamn Clearmont, Florida. <laughs> they don't know what the fuck you talking about. They're waiting on the farm their whole life. What, what's your take on what Jolly just said right there? He, he's accurate. I mean, that's where I am as a comic right now, is, is trying to cut down jokes that I think are part of the... The, the status quo that would be considered a type 5 I'm working on 18 so I mean I'm cutting it down right now so that's all I'm doing I'm shaving see your thing is and I, and I listen to you and you got you got some good bits you got good points yeah it's like some of the words like do you have to use this word or can I find a word that's more relatable I'm, I'm, to I'm everybody doing that. I'm thesaurusing shit and I don't like doing that because no, just you talk. No, just talk. you'll understand my reasoning though. Like because when I started out as like a young professional, I was a journalist mm. and I used to write for I get a it. magazine article. I get it. And here's what happens though. I t- I sent my shit to my editor and my editor sent me back this thing. Now keep in mind, I went four years to journalism school mm. and learned uh, statistical analysis, uh, breaking down the concepts of words. Uh, learning how to punctually say things in a very, you know what I mean? I get it. So your because brain, your brain worked different. My I brain get, works differently. Yeah, I get it. And I get it. at the same thing, when I wrote a very sophisticated article about like black tar heroin, let's just go with something like that, okay? Like I did the science in it, and I wrote a long article. My article came back and go, I don't fucking understand this. You need to write the common tongue. You need to write everything at a third grade leading level. That means Cletus can understand. It. I mean that is that is what I was told. That's why in comedy I don't do that because I'm making fun of stupid people. You can still make fun of stupid people and make people listen. Like I got bits that I like. I love misdirection. I'm going this way with. I mean I was fucked up, but you already laughing at it. That's the that's the thing about comedy, the beautiful thing about it. You want to know something? What just happened? I was leaning over, looking at the TV, at my one moment that I, I I could catch myself. The biggest white double chin was on that screen, like it was like jaws was taking, taking over half of the screen. Like this entire hat uh, here was all just my jaw. Damn. Yeah, you were pretty. Yeah. You were pretty close. Yeah. You were you were you yeah. were you were pretty close on that one. And yeah, at uh, a moment. Uh, we got we got to pull back from the HD right there, lower the uh, yeah, megapixels because yeah. like they're you seeing. You need to turn the OnlyFans sticker off too. I'm, <laughs> I'm really tired of selling pizzas on the weekend for for dick money. <laughs> but uh, with, but Jolly, I, I I feel like you you've gone through a, a bit of a change over the past uh, over the past year. Do you do you feel like COVID uh, is to attribute to that or because we I know the comic scene the comedy scene got hit hard. The you know there there weren't any you know open mics there weren't. Uh, chances to go uh, to go out to, but like how how is COVID affected like you? Uh, nothing really. It just made me go harder. You know one thing I love. I'm glad COVID happened. I I'm, uh, I hate that so many people actually passed away because of it. Mm-hmm. I hate that people lost loved ones. But it. Sometimes I don't speak my opinions on it because I'll just leave it alone mm-hmm. and just say, you know what, I'm going to go this way. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But now, with everything shut down, so many people blowed up off of TikTok 
and different avenues to show their comedic talent uh, to there's no gatekeepers like it used to be. Okay. Yeah. That's what they used to call them gatekeepers. There is adaptability now to everybody. You 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 got you got the worldwide internet. The only problem is if you are a, a internet comedian, it's more of them popped up out of everywhere. The yeah. good thing about it is I got an Orlando scene. The people who are famous now on TikTok are really good comedians who are still at mics who are still growing. You know? Yeah. So like all the old heads, they they always been mad about and hate internet comedians because they like, oh, you ain't in the gym and doing this. But then you had somebody else that controlled your career to where you can play this room or you can do this or I can hit up my boy over here and he can put you on this and you can get a guest spot. Now, the people are treating it like L.A. Like in L.A., Mm -hmm. you can be trash, but if your social media presence is dope, you can get on a lot more shows. That's true. That's absolutely true. You know what true. I'm saying? So I mean, it's 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 playing. It's even in the playing fields, so it's no ass kissing and all that stupid shit. Yeah. I fucking despise that. My ass kissing and my angle in it is finding corporations that want to put their t-shirts on me. That is what I angle. Well, I mean, that's not ass kissing. That's a business decision. Yeah. When so I that's say what I'm saying that's the only ass kissing I'm going to do in but, this business. Now, now one thing about it, me. I believe in the energy that you put out, you would get back in return. Oh, that 100%. But I mean, like, if, if somebody dope, or like, if somebody do something dope, I'm gonna always let them know. A family. Now we lost so many people. Now people break, finding their identities again, and some people, some of those other people, just weren't never. They're more laid back. They just don't like sit out there and talk shit. Like we would sit out there from nine o'clock yeah. to eleven o'clock, cracking jokes on each other, mama jokes, whatever. But it was a family. It felt like a family. You know what I'm saying? You get like headliners coming up. They just come up there, and they don't even go up to the mic. They're not going on the mic. They just dare to kick it on the patio. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just to shoot the shit. Like, that's how it was last Saturday at the Ken Plus 10. Uh-huh. I was like, damn, this shit made me fall in love with comedy again. That's beautiful. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I got away from the politics to where now I'm really working on my crab. I've always been working on my crab, but the only thing matters now is my crab. You know, mm-hmm. like me, 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 me. I'm selfish now. I'm very selfish. <laughs> me, 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 me. If I can help somebody, I will. But it's all about me. Yeah. I don't care about nobody else. I feel you. No, and I, 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 I think there are times like in your career itself where you, you have to focus on your art. You have to focus on yourself to, to, to get you off the ground. And nine times out of ten, you will get distracted when it comes to you know. I, look, I, I want to help out as many people as I can. I really do. And we were talking about this when we were in the car on the way over here. Yeah. That, we, you know, with, with starting the Chaos Network, with, with building the brand and just uh, branching out as much as possible. At the same time, I need I have to focus on, on myself and what's going on right here, right now. Yeah. To make sure that this crap is 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 sharp sharp the sharpest knife in the in the in the drawer and being able to get out there and, and have a good time but at the same time be able to throw up a a good product and you're not gonna have a good product if you're if you still working on yourself you you know you want to know another thing i did mm. uh i gave myself a ted talk i used to drink a lot but I, it was always at mics or something it was if i'm getting paid for it i'm not gonna go out and get like Obliterated. Yeah. But even not really drinking at open mics, because you know, open mics is the gym, that's the practice. Right. Not really drinking before I go up, I can, like, my mind's quicker, and I might be like, oh shit, I didn't even think of that tag. And I come back, and then that's getting better, that's getting sharper. And it's just, it's just more, it's more focus. Yeah. Because you can get more done. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. just focusing on what's going on. Because we, we, you know, to some, it's like, oh, it's just fun. 
<laughs> and to some it is gonna be fun. They're gonna find their niche. Like my boy Alex Soto. I love Alex Soto. I love that guy. Great guy. He uh, he does a lot of rooms. He has Neon Beach on Sundays. Uh, he usually brings a natural touring headliner. Then he has an open mic after. He has like four different rooms that he does every weekend. That's real paid shows out of town and stuff. But when he first started, this motherfucker used to wear bunny ears on his head. <laughs> and I'm like, you think that's going to make you funny? I'm glad he went with the uh, the lampshade look. You know what I mean? The long shirts. Yeah. The, the, the lounge lizard kind of look. I love it. But that came from him focusing on him. That's how he's able to run a, a very respectful company. Yeah. And he has a following. And people come to all of these shows. Yeah. And so you're not going all the way out there to Bellevue or Lady Lake to, to entertain a dead crowd. He giving you the real deal, you know what I mean? Like it's a it's a good show. Yeah. The the, the vape room show is one of my favorites to do. He loves to bring oh. me. He pet he he tags me together with two of these like really nihilistic narcissistic Tampa comics. Yeah. And every time we do it, we the three of us just destroy that room. We we take it down to a Bill Burr kind of like there's nothing left kind of shit. It that's in Lady Lake. Yeah, it's the uh, Carecraft, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I love that room. Oh man. I got like four applause mm-hmm. breaks that night. I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? <laughs> I was like, this shit is paper, really right? going good. I mean, I love, I don't really care what color the people are, It's but it's different jokes you would do in different rooms, you know? Like, no, it, 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 it definitely is. Um, but Jolly, as we're like kind of nearing the end, because I wanted to keep a solid hour be- uh, between us. Yeah, you I know, you and I, yeah, we'll go. We'll go for a long ass fight. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. I'm just here kind of contributing. I feel like I'm I mean, you're a part of the show, man. Ain't you a part of the show? I am. I'm so learning. You... Though. I'm learning. See, I, I'm one of those people who has a big mouth, and there's someone in the room who's better than me. And I, Mama always told me, if someone's better than you, listen to what they have to say. So, oh. and that's the truest sense of the word, because usually I'm the guy who knows the most. <laughs> so I just try to be right now. I'm learning. That that's just the real craft of it. You know this. You know. uh the best thing to do is to not say nothing. I didn't say nothing. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you, yeah. but this is how I look at it. I'm going to say as least as possible so I can know who I'm around. Right. And then I can say, okay, well, you're a very intelligent individual. And then you'll be like, okay, well, you're a fucking idiot. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why I like to go up fifth. What? At the, at the, at the mics. Oh, to see I, how the I crowd can is? See, I can see the urban comic. I can see the white comic. I can see which angle... Is it sex jokes tonight? Is it, I, like you just need to read the room sometimes. Sometimes I just go out there. If it's a shit show type mic, I just go <laughs> and talk shit. That's the nights I go fishing. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you have no topic in mind. I've been you... I've been to your shit shows. I've been to your shit shows. I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just you just go out there and make people laugh. Yeah. yeah. You end up without a t-shirt at one point or another. Uh, well, that wasn't really a shit show. That was just drunk and jolly. <laughs> and that guy there was a fucking animal. Oh man! But let, let me ask fucking you, fucking savage though. So yeah. fucking savage. And I you love you started something, uh, just recently, in regards to a product line. Yeah. And I, I, uh, you were telling me about the about it in the car, but I want you to tell me about it on the show. Um, well, you know, I always go by the winners. That's something that I made up. Mm-hmm. The winners is just it's just I, it was basically to bring people all walks of life together, man. If you uh, like even the smallest things are wins, man. We just don't find them. It, on the shirt it says the winners. The name of my company is the Winners Group LLC. On the shirt, uh, it says hashtag the winners, and underneath it it says they who find victory in accomplishments and defeat. Because you can find a negative in every positive, and you can find a positive in every negative. You know what I mean? Like let's say. I don't know how to, what type of analogy I could give you, but, you know, like, going to jail. And next thing you know, um, you were in there for a month, but you could have been in there for six months. Yeah. So you could find a positive out of this if you were looking for it. No, I, I did three months in Simpson for a violation of probation, and in that time, I lost a lot. I lost my house, I lost my car, I lost my grandmother, I lost my job. I lost everything. And having to come back out and having to rebuild Patricio uh, took took a couple of years. I you know I I, I did the uh, the grind with the jobs. I did construction. I did dishwashing. I did cleaning. I did I did everything. 
because I know that I had fucked up in this society and I needed to show show the world that I'm I'm not that. I'm I'm a lot better. I can give more to the world and you know what was it 2009 2009 when I was locked up 12 years later look where I'm at right now yeah I mean it, it took that to get there yeah you know what I mean like cause I got in trouble I went on vacation for a couple months and I was and I'm just uh, I'm thinking to myself like damn these people don't care nothing about me I'm telling them like I've been on probation for all these years and every time it's like why why is nobody saying hey man this man got a whole like house and everything I didn't lose anything. I just lost that time I can't get back. Yeah. But that that's the victory that I found because I didn't lose nothing and I came out a better person mentally. You know what I mean? Like oh, I, I get you. Who I, I am, just you, even the stuff that I'm going to stand for. When you lose your freedom, you uh, you gain more insight on life and you gain uh, more appreciation and value to everything that you had because whether it's a day, a month, or years behind those walls and behind the, the literally those cages, it makes you appreciate. And yeah, they put you in air quote correctional uh, facility, but at the same time, it, it's there to put a kind of wake you to fuck up and like, hey, you need to stop doing some stupid shit that you, you're doing in your life right now to be a contributing member of the society. Because if we're all in this together, we're gonna go far as a society. But once in a while, you know, we're, we have a few little loose screws here, so some dull blades in the drawer, all over the place. But, but right. go ahead. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna say like, uh, it suck when you sit in there for all that time and it's something that you didn't do. Like they just got rid of the violation because they were trying to come. They did this today, and I'm like, so I sit in this bitch for four and a half fucking months, and you and I'm supposed to still be on good probation. Y'all can suck my dick. You know what I mean? Like let's this, let's oh, let's this, go to jail and get this shit over with. Were they trying to get like a, come at you with a technicality or a new law? Well, I got, I caught a DUI, but I wasn't drunk. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like three in the evening on a Sunday. The night before, I was pretty drunk, but I'm not gonna chance my life with like drinking and driving. That's the stupidest shit ever, because I believe that, you know, drinking and driving is serious. Oh yeah. Like I'll get in a in a in a in a cab or something. Or if I'm at a mic, I just won't drink just because I don't want to take nobody's life or nobody's loved one's life by my stupidity. No, no, no. That, and that's a very smart approach because there are some people out there where they're like, oh, no, I'm uh, I'm okay. I'll, I'll drive home. And I'll, I'll admit this. I've I, We've all done it. We've all, we've all done it because we're like, oh, I know myself. I can control myself. I'll be fine. But I've talked myself out, out of a DUI before. And it's 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 not it, it's the scariest shit. When you have those lights behind you, you've got four cruisers all around your car, and your next thought is, am I gonna get out of here, or am I gonna have to call someone to get me out? You know the messed up part about it is, the guy pulled me up. Well, I, my tie like fucked up, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm like, fuck. My my phone dead. I'm trying to get home, you know, just do my Sunday stuff, cause. Monday, I got to go to work for a motherfucker and give them 10 hours of my day yeah. that I don't want to give them. But I'm getting myself together. So he comes up to the car. And he was like, okay, whatever. I'm talking to the ambulance, having a whole conversation with them. The only thing that saved me was the uh, body cam footage of him talking to the ambulance saying, hey, man, this guy, is, the ambulance telling him he's perfectly fine. Like, wow. why, why, why are you doing this? Like, he can go home from here. Get him a tow truck because his tire fucked up, but then he lives right up the road. He's fine. This guy here want to be an extra super fucking cop dickhead motherfucker. I passed all the fucking field sobriety tests. All of this here, he was like, well, I'm going I'm to arrest you for a DUI. I said, what? <laughs> I don't even smell like liquor, bro. He's talking about my eyes glossing and shit. It's, I don't have the air conditioning in the car, motherfucker. I is fucking hot as shit. Yeah. You lucky I got a shirt on right now. I usually <laughs> ride without a shirt at this time of the day. So then it was just all of this stupidness. But I was like, that just really let me know that I'm bound for greatness. And I can't do nothing stupid to mess this up. Amen. That's why I just don't even really come out the house anymore unless it's to do something that's productive for me. Other than that, I don't even leave out the house. In, in your <laughs> honor, Charlie, let me tell you my view. And that's where we're, yeah, go ahead and do it. 
right. It's good? It's good. <laughs> so, so in typical fashion, I like it hammered. And I mean, I mean jolly special hammered. Yeah, wh- White Claws. No, no. I'm a whiskey boy. Mm. I'm from the... Uh, whatever. No shit, I can throw them back as hard as you can. I'm one of those bottle of vodka in the morning, whiskey in the evening kind of guys. But hold on, wait. Here's the thing. Here's See, the this thing. is the misconception people be having. I'm a naturally happy person. Yeah. So I might have only had two drinks and I'm like, oh, John is drunk. I'm, if I fuck with you, I, I ask any of my friends, I say crazy shit anyway. Oh, yeah. So it might seem as though, oh, that's some drunk shit. But no, I just like to say dumb shit and make people <laughs> say, like, what the fuck just happened? I, no, I'm talking about Bullet Bush, Jolly. I know. I that I had some was, good nights. You were, you were like, I'm trash tonight. We're going to fuck this up. And you literally went up there and did 12 minutes. But I destroyed that <laughs> you bitch. You did. You did. Because <laughs> I was just coming from the uh, from the TND event, the, day, the, day, oh, the land cruise. Oh, the land cruise. How, 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 how was that? How was that? That shit was a vibe. That shit was beautiful. <laughs> it was good. I mean, because I, I, I got a lot of friends as BDMs and stuff. That's how I met a lot of y'all. Like, yeah. You know, I never would have known y'all great human beings if it wasn't for that. Like I seen Jessica Johnson, Justin McGuire, I seen Sam. I uh, was like, Jessica Fuck. Johnson. Mm. I love her. <laughs> That's my partner, bro. That's my dog. And it was just I had a good time, so I was like, oh shit, the bullet bush finna start. So I hit up Jake. I'm like, hey man, can I get some time? He was like, yeah, man, you ain't got a lot of time to get here, but come on. So I got him on them little downtown bikes. And no. Like, yeah, I'm trying to fucking blow the motor up. Got in there as soon as I got in there. He was like, you got one ahead of you. I was like, yes. This shit was like a movie type shit. <laughs> Just went in and fucking shot the club up. But as we're wrapping up, Jolly. Uh, I got arrested by a bike cop. What? What? I was driving down Central doing 60. And I stopped, still stopped at the stoplight, where a uh, stop sign where the uh, Publix is in yeah. Down Central. <laughs> the cop stops and he looks at me. I'm blacked out, like fucking should have been driving. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there was no good decisions left to be made. Yeah. I decided to throw one of these up, right in his fucking oh, face. Oh no! At the end of uh, Summerlin, in front of the sushi restaurant that I worked. Is where I, the bike cop pulled me out of the car, threw me out of the ground, and put his gun to the back of my fucking head. I have the video. God damn. And he goes, laughing now, cracker. He was a white dude? No. He was a Spanish dude. Damn, he said that? Yeah. I wasn't dressed very nicely. We came from Ghetto Nights at the, at the, at the podcast. So I was dressed in uh, some knockoff boo boo kind of shit. It was, it was, it was pretty bad. But, uh, <laughs> Jolly, as we're wrapping up, we, we got to touch base, base with you. We got to find out uh, your, your evolution of comedy. We got to find out uh, your projects that you're working on. Uh, as we're signing off, like, with your final thoughts, like, what's your drive? What's your drive, bro? What, what do you mean, like, uh... What, what keeps you going in, 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 uh, in comedy? Because I know I'm really, really good at it. And I know that the more and more I, I, I work at it, like, I post this picture... It's got Eddie Murphy, Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor, and it's somebody else. Sidney Poitier, he wasn't a comic, was he? he no, he, he was an actor. actor. Yeah, yeah, I know who he is. I'm just saying. I don't think I'm trying to see, is he... Not. Nah, I, I, I'm saying trying to see if he was in that picture. Wasn't it and, Bernie Mac in that picture? Nah, he wasn't famous yet. But oh, okay. he... I post that picture to keep me going to know that I'm better than these motherfuckers. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, I, and I say that in the most narcissistic asshole way I can say it. I'm done, like, just being super nice to motherfuckers. My whole goal is if you go up after me, I'm trying to fucking bury you. I don't care who you are. You know what I mean? And it's just like, that just keep me going like, okay, man, it took this person. It took Kevin Hart like 19 years almost. Like, 15 years to get where he at. I'm only on year five. Mm. It's going to be some motherfuckers who don't like you. One thing I know about comedy is going to be people that fear you. That will bad talk a next person about you until that person sees you and they're like, you ain't that bad. Everybody ain't going to like everybody. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I, I It keep me going. 
Like today, I'm gonna I'm I'm go to Grumpy's. What time y'all start? 10 30? Uh, 8 45. List goes out. I'll you can there. do another show and come back to Grumpy's. Yeah, I'll That's be the there. Kind of shit we do. I'm gonna get on one of them little bikes. And I love them bikes. Are, That's where, how where I get doing? around. Are you doing, what are you doing tonight? I ain't. I, I might stop by a Will Mill room. I was trying to get on this show right here on Orange Avenue, but I, I, I hope I get on it next week. But oh yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a dope room. Yeah, I, love I might room. go to Falcon. Try it out. It's usually only one person there, but I don't be caring about that. As long as that one person is attentive, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's like, that's the thing about an open mic. You just want to be around the audience. You don't like if you're thinking that it's gonna be a packed crowd. Like uh, that's not gonna happen. But like Will Mill has a really good show. Your show's good. But I mean, it, Grand Prix is a hit or miss location, and that's why I love it because you never know what kind of energy you're gonna get. I do tonight. What kind of forward I'm gonna get? So. But the thing is, you're just working on your craft. You know what I mean? That's all you're doing. Yeah. But, like, that's just my my thing. I just wanna be. See, that's why I'm mine on the table. <laughs> on the floor. It's fine. But but it's no, fine. I mean like, I just wanna be the greatest of all time. I wanna be named, known up there with everybody else. And I'm really dedicating everything I have to do to that. I don't believe you got to move to L.A. I don't believe you got to do none of that. We got the internet now. Yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? I mean, everybody says that you got to move here, you got to do that, and you got to do this, and you got to blah, blah. And I, none of y'all ever made it, so how the hell are you going to tell me what I need to do? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to tell you something. If you spend 10 minutes of your time every day learning how to make a goddamn flyer, Tenfold, I changed the perception of a place that people used to think was a haven for drugs, and now they think it's for comedy. That's what I'm saying. Is that if you just spend the time with as much of the social media marketing that I've learned over the last six months alone, I'm like, I'm not that great of a comic, but I know how to talk shit really, really well. But you see, the thing is, we all find our niches, and then as long as we don't abuse them and we keep our uh, business relationships yep. okay with everybody else, yeah. you find a way. Like, I'll give you an example. Like Grumpies, man. I let a homeless dude up there tell five minutes of jokes the other night. It was the most Bro, it's an open mic. Heard. But I mean, like, everybody finds their way. You know, everybody finds what it is they do that they can, everybody else can branch off to. Exactly. I'm, I'm the raving madman who talks about Doge and, and Rim Joe. Fuck it, that's it. That's it. Show's over. <laughs> I told you you weren't going to bring up Doge anymore. I told you. And, and now you're going to come to Grand Prix and hear me do it for 30 minutes. Exactly. You're going to do it for 30 minutes. I'm definitely not coming to this shit, Dan. <laughs> but, uh, I'm going to talk about tongue and uh, Elon Musk butthole. But uh, we're going to work together to build what we were talking about. Yes. We're going to promote it. Yeah, but uh, where can people find your your stuff or find you? Like what uh, what you want to plug right now? The next what, time I come on here, I will about? have uh, so much other stuff. Cause Patricio is gonna help me out because that's my buddy in real life. We just discussed that. Exactly. Uh, Mrd Jolly on Instagram. That, you know the at sign. Yeah, I'm about to. I'm gonna do that at Mr. Pretty much on any social platform. Oh no, I'm D- saying- Mrd Jolly. On all social platforms. So if you're watching the video, if you're not watching the video and listening to this in audio, it's at M R D J O L L Y, Mr. David Jolly. Yeah, and if you if you get a chance to go out to check out David Jolly in person, take advantage of that because this dude puts on a hell of a show. He gives you your all, and I've never left a comedy room, uh, how to say, without my cheeks hurting if David Jolly hasn't been up there. Because this man right here delivers every time. Love him to death. Love him like family. And you're going to see more of him here in Orlando. You're going to see more of him outside of Orlando. This, this guy, this guy's going to blow up. I promise you that. And with all that being said, Jolly, thank you so much, dude. I appreciate you. I appreciate the time you gave us. It really oh, yeah. means a lot man, to me, you man. you know you're my partner, man. Right back at you, man. You know what I'm saying? I fuck with you in real life, man. You're you my partner. You too, Salty. I know. I know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because when the mics go off, the big dogs talk. Yeah, for sure. Gloves come off kind of shit. So. <laughs> With all that being said, if you're not laughing, you're not living. Live every day to the fullest, but always do it. On the side of Doge. On the oh, side yeah. of chaos, motherfucker. We'll God, see y'all man, next I'm week. I'm sick of Doge and your ass, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah. Y'all